Hi, today we are going to talk about uh, vibrational spectroscopy. Vibrational spectroscopy, usually we're talking about uh, infrared spectroscopy and uh, Raman spectroscopy. In this chapter, there are going to be two lectures and two videos for experiment uh, show. The first lecture will talk about uh, basic vibrational theory and uh, infrared spectroscopy. The second lecture will be Raman spectroscopy. Vibrational spectroscopy is a method to detect the interaction between electromagnetic radiation and the nuclear vibration inside the molecular. This electromagnetic radiation is exists in many forms like visible light, like UV light, infrared, X-ray, microwave, and so on. The vibration in molecular, let's take the simplest model two atoms. There is a bond between these two atoms and it can vibrating, can vibration like uh, a spring. It can either be compressed or tensiled. We have an equilibrium state. We are there's um, without uh, shining with electromagnetic radiation and if we have electromagnetic radiation the distance the r is different from r equilibrium according to hooke's law the force for the vibration can be expressed by k times x here's k refers to the bound strings between these two atoms and the x refers to the displacement that is the difference between R and RE. With this we can calculate the energy if it is a harmonic vibration. The energy equals to K times the displacement square. We can draw a diagram to express the displacement. Here is the equilibrium distance. This shows the energy and here shows the displacement distance increasing or decreasing. This is a harmonic model, but uh, however, actually it is not the case in real Moleculars. So to predict the energy of the vibration, we need to use quantum mechanics to do that. In quantum mechanics, we divide this vibration into several levels and we name it quantum vibration number. So the energy equals to Planck constant times the vibrational frequency times uh, the sum of vi quantum vibration number and plus 0.5. This vibration frequency, if it is equals to the electromagnetic radiation, then this radiation will be absorbed by the molecular we call it absorption, but however, it can also be scattered if the frequency doesn't match. We can draw a diagram. This is the molecular and we're shining electromagnetic electroradiation on it. And we can have, uh, we can have several situations. First, if the 
electron radiation, the frequency equals the vibration no frequency. Then it causes absorption, of course. But if these two frequency doesn't match, then we have a scattering. The radiation will be scattered. If the frequency of the scattered is the same as the input, that's the electromagnetic radiation, then we have a relay scattering. If it doesn't equal to each other, then it is a Raman spectroscopy. The absorption is a infrared spectrum. For example, we can discuss like this. We have a IR radiation with three different wavelengths. We shine it on this molecule. After the IR, IR radiation passes through the molecular. One of these wavelengths, one of this wave, will be absorbed. And it can be detected with an IR instrument. So, yeah, all this the vibration we can discuss with. Um, more complete a more complex system let's go first go to three atoms like carbon dioxide we in carbon dioxide there could be four different vibration no mode first carbon uh, first oxygen atoms can move horizontally the second the carbon atoms can move to one side, to one of the oxygen. The third, these um, oxygen atoms can do a scissor or twist movement. The fourth, these three atoms can move at different directions. But if we have a ad molecular have n atoms, these atoms can do all this movement as shown here. So as we know, each atoms can have can have uh, three directions in the space. So it could have three times n different vibration. However, there are limit that described in the book. So the total mode is 3 times n minus 6. However, if in the, it is a liner molecular like carbon dioxide, the mode is 3 times n minus 5. So that's why we show 4 mode in the previous slide. We have four vibration, but not all this vibration is uh, can be detected by IR technique, because some of this, like the first mode, is not IR activity. To be an IR activity, the vibration must generate net dipole moment. That means the dipole moment at any displacement shouldn't be zero. We have the basic background knowledge. Now we go to the measurement, the instrument. Now, for previously, the old IR instrument, well, the IR will be generated and separated into two. One is passed through sample, the other is used as a reference. Then all this, this tool reached the detector and the detector will define the 
difference between these two and uh, generate a spectra. But this is not a modern instrument now. The modern instrument, we can draw a diagram here. There are several components in this modern uh, IR instrument. We have uh, IR source, we have a mirror, one mirror that is moving in both directions, and a fixed mirror. We have a light splitter or beam splitter. We have sample and the detector. That's the simplest diagram. We shine in beam, reach splitter and separate it. These beams reach to a two mirror and be reflected back and pass through the sample and reach the detector. The detector will just output a interferogram, which is not uh, the spectra that we see on the software. So we need some method to transform interferogram into a spectrum. Modern method is using Fourier transform with a mathematic method. Then you have this kind of spectrum and which is called Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, in short FTIR. FDIR is also even more um, precise for uh, measurement other than the previous diagram. We can draw another diagram. The basic component is the same as uh, the previous diagram, but here there are extra light sources. There exist a laser source and a white light source. These two sources which is not for um, measure the samples. It just generate signal to make more precise detection. The laser, it will generate a square wave signal which can trigger uh, the start or stop of uh, a detection. With this laser signal, we can do high reproducibility and uh, regularly detections. This white light source, it will produce a signal which is zero retardation. It can be used as a reference to trigger the start of sampling. Now we discuss uh, the component in IR. First, we discuss IR source. We can have a uh, Nernst Glover, it made of rares. We can have global source. Incatsent virus source, tungsten filament, and of course, carbon dioxide laser. The detector. There are three general detectors. One is a thermal detector. In thermal detector, it could be a thermal couple, which is made of two different materials with um, boundary. When 
beam shine on this boundary, it, this uh, two materials will generate a different uh, temperature. So the signal can be uh, generated. We can also use bolometer. The second is pure electric detector. And the third, the common use is a photoconductive detector, such as a photodiode. Use IR method, we can do, we can measure the transmittance, reflectance, and the absorbance of beam or electromagnetic radiation on the sample. Now, how can we use this uh, IR method? Use IR method, we can do determine, we can determine what is your sample, what it is. We have a spectra and we search in, your, in the database, then we know what it is by comparing the spectra. We can also do detection to see the contaminations in your sample. And also we can do quantitative measurement to see how much is in your sample, the amount of molecular or some other materials.